Hello. For these next uh, few weeks, we're going to be exploring the theme of fruitfulness. And in each of these uh, Thought for the Day videos, we're going to look at different aspects of what it means to be someone who lives a fruitful existence. Do you know, over these past few weeks, I've been feeling uh, increasingly concerned with direction, with questions of where God is leading us. You might have seen in our church emails, we talk a lot about our next steps as a community. In some of our Sunday mornings, we might talk about this new normal that we're heading towards. And I'm sure for myself and for many others, uh, lots of our prayers at this time are, God, where are you leading us towards? Both for ourselves as individuals, for our families, but also for our church. Where is God leading? But you see, what, what's important is that as much as we should be seeking God's direction, actually, when we see uh, God in the Bible, whereas our question to God is often, where are you leading us? God seems often less concerned with our direction and more with our transformation. Where we might ask questions of where, he asks questions of who, of who are we becoming as his people? And so it strikes me that perhaps in this season, as life changes and shifts around us, it's perhaps pertinent to just make some space to reflect on who God is calling us to be. We're going to be looking at a short passage from the book of Galatians. Uh, this is a passage I'm sure many will be familiar with. Uh, it just so happens this is actually the passage I was given to preach on when I first came to Christ the Rock. And in this uh, few verses, Paul contrasts two ways of living. The first is he talks about being led by the flesh. And this is uh, Paul's way of describing how sometimes we can be led by our natural instincts that aren't always helpful. So he describes the natural instinct of feeling anger towards those who hurt us. The natural instinct of feeling envy towards those whose life seems better. And yet in contrast to this, the alternative is, he says, we are to be people who, instead of being led by the flesh, are led by the spirit. And in these couple of verses in chapter five, I'm going to read in a moment. Uh, he just kind of explores and expands on what that means. So I'm just going to read uh, from Galatians chapter five. So Paul writes, the fruits of the spirit is love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. For those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And so since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the spirit and over these next few thought for the day videos we're going to look in a little bit of detail at each of those character attributes Paul lists at the start but I thought just to begin uh, rather than looking at the what uh, God is calling us to I just think a, a little bit about what Paul is saying about how this is accomplished and I want to just uh, look at two short phrases that bookend this passage. The first comes at the start, where Paul says that these are the fruit of the Spirit. Now, when Paul uses this word fruit, uh, clearly he's talking metaphorically. And yet this word fruit actually elsewhere is used very uh, physically to define the, the physical fruit that trees and vines produce. And I wonder, uh, perhaps for, for some of us, when we talk about what it means to be led by the Spirit, often we use language that implies the dramatic. So we might talk about a dramatic vision or the dramatic impartation of a word. Or a, we might hear about somebody describing a dramatic personal encounter. 
And whilst Paul uh, isn't arguing against this, indeed, he encountered many of these things himself in his life. Actually, in this word fruit, he's less talking about a dramatic moment and more about a lifestyle of cultivation. You see, as any first century farmer or winemaker uh, would know, to produce good fruits requires a steady daily cultivation of the soil and plant. And I wonder for us, as uh, we're in this moment where uh, so many things are changing around us, so many of our lifestyles are looking different to what they did before, I wonder, are we still cultivating a closeness with God? Are we still having a uh, lifestyle, a daily existence of feeling refreshed through worship? Are we still cultivating our minds uh, through the nourishment of his words? And are we still feeling that comfort for our souls as we come to God in prayer? So first of all, uh, when he talks of fruit, Paul is talking about a cultivation, a daily cultivation of our lives. Secondly, uh, at the end of the passage, he says those who are led by the Spirit should keep in step with the Spirit. The word Paul uses there is the word stokio, and it implies a physical closeness to one who is in front. And what's interesting is that often we talk about the attributes that Paul's just mentioned, these character traits of being loving and kind and so on. We talk about them as things we should live up to. We should live up to a certain standard. We should live up to a certain uh, maybe morality. And yet when Paul uses this word stockio, he is less uh, defining it as something we should live up to. He is less saying we should live up to a level of kindness or live up to a level of uh, self-control and more saying we should draw forwards to the one who is in front. I wonder if you might think about it like this, that to be someone who is led by the spirit is less to be one who is aspiring to be better and more to be somebody who is stepping closer to the one who leads us and that actually to be somebody who is fruitful is to be somebody who draws close to the most fruitful one the character and figure of Jesus and as we come to him as we cultivate our lives towards him so his character of love of kindness of peace would exude out of us. And so as we start this short series, I'm just going to pray a couple of these points over us. You might want to join me. So God, we believe that you are uh, the great farmer. And we ask that you would cultivate in us a personal transformation. That we would not be people who live purely to follow our instincts, but instead we follow your spirit towards you. Amen.